welcome friends so this is the 11th session of this course and we are entering into the third week of the course in last few sessions we started discussions on forecasting and we started discussions particularly on exponential smoothing methods in our last two sessions we discussed the basic concept of exponential smoothing method that how it is an improvement of our weighted average met moving method and at the same time we also discussed different types of classification of these models how we can incorporate trend how can we incorporate seasonality and different types of trends and different types of seasonality whether it is linear or ratio so all that we have already discussed in our last two sessions now in this particular session we will see that how we can use these models in our calculations how we can use these models to forecast and for that purpose we have some data with us and with the help of data we will use our different types of forecasting models particularly exponential smoothing model now in this table we have the data of uh, past 6 months from january of a month to june now we want forecast for july so you have actual demand data for these 6 months from january to june and with the help of this actual demand data we can forecast for july we have already seen how can we use simple moving average method and weighted moving average method where we will take average of some most recent periods according to our choice of moving average according to our choice of moving average so if my moving average period is let's say 3 so i will take the average of april may june's demand and that average will be the forecast for july if i am going with weighted moving average method i will assign let's say weight of 0.5 to the demand of june 0.3 to the demand of may and 0.2 to the demand of april and then the product of weight and actual demand and the summation of that products will give me the demand of uh, will give me the forecast for the month of july so these two methods we have already discussed in our previous classes now in today's session we will discuss that how we can apply the exponential smoothing model for determining the forecast for the july now we know that in theory we have already discussed that the forecast is going to movement going to randomize around a base value so we assume a base value for initiating our process and now my job is to get the updated base value for the month of june and the updated base of june you can write it as s june this s june is going to be the forecast for july this is forecast for the month of july so now in my simplest method of exponential smoothing what i am going to do that i will do iterations to update the value of this initial base of 20 and you see this initial base of 20 is actually the forecast for january forecast is 20 that is s not this initial base is nothing but s not now the s1 which we will calculate that that is the forecast for the month of february and this data d 19 these are the demand of january this is the demand of february so now the purpose of telling you is to familiarize with the conventions that what type of conventions we are going to follow so that you understand what is the meaning of s what is the meaning of d what is the meaning of f 
Now, it is clear that S naught is going to be the forecast for the period month. So, similarly following this convention as I just wrote S June will be the forecast for July. So, my job is to determine the value of S June. Now, for that purpose if you remember in our last session we discussed that the base value have fluctuations because of variations in actual demand. So, in this exponential smoothing method we are going to smoothen the fluctuation of this actual demand. So, that uh, it comes closer to our base value. So, for that purpose we need to use a smoothing constant. So, here we have only considered the fluctuations in the base value. So, we require only one type of smoothing constants. You can recall that we discussed that in a very generalized condition there may be a requirement of three smoothing constants. In our coming sessions we will do one case where all three smoothing constants are required. But here this is a simple case. So, we are using only one smoothing constant that is alpha. You can also recall that the values of smoothing constants vary from 0 to 1. The values vary from 0 to 1 and we also discussed that the popular values of alpha vary from 0.1 to 0.3. These are popular values and this is the possible range. So, here randomly we have taken a value alpha equals to 0 0.2, we have taken the value alpha equals to 0 0.2 and by taking this alpha equals to 0 0.2 we will update the value of base table and therefore, we will use this equation if you recall that our st equals to alpha dt plus 1 minus alpha S t minus 1. This equation you may recall which we have discussed in our previous sessions. So, now S t is S January equals to alpha into D January plus 1 minus alpha S naught. So, if you go with our available data demand of January is 19 s naught is 20. So, d gen is 19 and s naught is 20 value of alpha which we have taken is 0.2 and this becomes 0.8. So, here this becomes uh, 3.8 and this becomes 16. So, it becomes 19.8. So, this 19.8 will be the value of base which you can put here or this is the base of January or it is a forecast for the month of February. Now, using this 19.8 how did we do this calculation you can use this uh, uh, complete formula. Now, we will do this calculation in this table itself so that you can understand that how this data is flowing and we can also add one more column of forecast. So, the forecast for the month of January was 20. Now, the forecast for the month of February is 19.8. So, you can understand that these values of previous periods are the forecast for the next period. Now, this D February is known to us. So, now my job is to determine the value of S February. Again use the formula alpha dt. So, 0.2 into dt that is 25 plus 1 minus alpha that is 0 0.8 into st minus 1 that is 19.8. If I do this calculation this becomes uh, 5 plus 19.8 uh, into 
uh, this point 8 I solve it and we get uh, 396 by 25 that becomes uh, 5. So, this becomes uh, 521 by 25. So, that is the value of uh, as February and this is uh, going to be the forecast for the month of March. Now, again in this iterative manner we can go forward this is D of March. Now, D of March we will use to get the updated value of S of March which is 0 0.2 into dt that is 19 plus 0 0.8 into this st minus 1 that is 521 by 25. And in this fashion you keep on doing the iteration and finally, you will find the value of s june and that will be the forecast of July. So, it is a very sequential way of calculation of the forecast. Now, the simpling of uh, this whole process is that uh, if I have the value of let us say this pre previous period that is S May which is 0.2 into demand of May plus 0.8 into forecast of May. Now, with this if uh, I am going ahead and I have the demand data of June. So, only by doing a slight change you can calculate the value of F July. So, the iterative nature of this calculation is so simple that whenever data gets developed whenever new data is available you will be able to update your forecast without much effort you need not to go back you need to consider only the current equation and by putting your new values into that current equation you can update your forecast so this is the forecast for july so in this case uh, we took the monthly data so the forecasts are updated on the monthly basis similarly you can do it uh, on the uh, weekly basis, you can do it on the uh, quarterly basis. So, you can choose a period of uh, forecasting and depending upon the requirement of your organization, you can develop this kind of table. And uh, nowadays, uh, it is uh, very simple that uh, even the simplest software like Excel can help you in doing this iteration automatically. You can put this formula like uh, alpha dt plus 1 minus alpha st minus 1 this formula you can put in the excel and uh, excel this formula this is the important formula and uh, by putting this formula you can automatically get uh, iteration step by step and your forecasting will be done so uh, this is the simplest method of exponential smoothing now you can see that uh, the weightage of uh, our in this particular case if you remember here we took as January where we are giving 20 percent weightage where we are giving 20 percent weightage to the demand of current period and 80 percent weightage we are giving to the forecast of January this S naught is basically F January now you can recall it. So, here in this formula you see 20 percent weight to the current demand. and 80 percent to the forecast or previous base. Now, you can recall we have already discussed again I will like to reiterate that point in case this weightage is like that alpha is equals to 0. Now, in this case alpha equals to 0 
यू आर गिविंग जीरो परसेंट वेटेज टू द करेंट डिमांड एंड हंड्रेड परसेंट वेटेज टू द प्रीवियस बेस सो इट मींस देयर आर सम फ्लक्चुएशन इन द करेंट पीरियड विच आर ऑफ एक्सट्रीम टेम्परेरी नेचर दीज आर नॉट गोइंग टू बी रिकरिंग दीज आर नॉट गोइंग टू अफेक्ट योर फ्यूचर डिमांड सो यू वॉन्ट टू डिस्कार्ड दोज temporary changes you do not want to include that phenomena in your future calculations so in that case you take alpha equals to 0 that is one extreme case alpha equals to 1 when you are considering that 100% changes need to be incorporated here your base has shifted to a new value and you do not want to continue with the previous base in that case you take alpha equals to 1 so these are the extreme conditions uh, it is important to remember these things uh, again and again and therefore you will also be able to appreciate the meaning of uh, popular values of alpha that uh, why the uh, smaller values of alpha have more smoothing effect larger values will give you a very impulsive kind of forecast but uh, smaller values of alpha will give you a more smooth values of forecast so uh, we use more uh, smaller values so that uh, your curve of forecast is a more uh, smooth one now we go further in this discussion and uh, here taking the same data you remember this old table the first was 1925 1921 20 25 20, these were the demands of six period so the same data which we were discussing again we are going to use the same data now the base value again we have assumed 20 but now i feel that my data may have some more characteristics also and i am thinking i am thinking that my data has a linear trend so now i am going to use a smoothing model which requires two smoothing constants and therefore i have taken alpha and beta as my smoothing constants alpha to smooth the fluctuations of the base value beta to smooth the fluctuations of the trend value so i am going to use two smoothing constants alpha for base beta for trend there may be another complicated situation where i may use alpha beta gamma all three but we will go for that situation in our coming classes in this case we are going to use two smoothing constants alpha and beta now in this particular case we are assuming to start our discussions we are assuming that the initial base value is 0 uh, base value is 20 and initial trend value is 0 now you see here what we need to do we have to smooth the base value using this formula you can say that this is formula a then we also need to smooth the trend this is formula b and then we also need to know what is the forecast for the next period so the forecast for the next period is since it is a case of a linear trend will be this forecast for the next period will be the sum of base value or the average value and the trend value so updated trend plus updated base will be the forecast for the next period meaning is if i am forecasting for july so the base of june and trend of june their sum will give me the forecast for july if i am forecasting for june so base of may and trend of may will give me the forecast for the month of june so this way earlier in the previous uh, discussion previous example the forecasting was only limited to this particular component the second step trend was not there but now i am saying that data may have trend and uh, therefore i am taking 
the advanced model where we have uh, this uh, base as well as strength component also present into my data and here I am going to use two smoothing constants and that is how the forecast if you see will be the sum of these two. So, this is uh, S naught, this is T naught. So, this is F 1. So, this is F 1 equals to S naught plus T naught. Similarly, this will be S 1, this is T 1. So, F 2 will be S 1 plus T 1 and so on. If I am talking of F July, this is S June, this is T June. So, F July will be S June plus T June. So, the same iterative process will be followed in this case, but here we need to continuously update two values, one of the base and second of trend and how we are going to do that formula is available to us that first you will update the value of base using alpha dt plus 1 minus alpha and this you see st minus 1 plus tt minus 1 this is actually the forecast this is the actually the forecast this st minus 1 plus tt minus 1 this is actually the forecast for the current period. So, you can now relate it with our earlier model. Then this TT, this is uh, TT and uh, TT means the current trend. So, here what we are doing the component of uh, previous trend and the difference of this since this is a, a linear trend. So, the updated base minus the previous base that will give you the value of current trend and uh, the previous trend and on the basis of that uh, you will calculate the uh, updated smooth trend and uh, the sum of these two will give you the value of uh, your uh, uh, forecast. Now, let us uh, do calculation of this and for that purpose uh, let me have uh, some values with us. So, we start with the first value of uh, D January. So, D January is given to us as 19. S not is given to us as 20, T not given to us as 0 and with the help of this you can also say that F 1 or F January equals to 20, 20 plus 0. So, F January becomes 20. Now, my job is to calculate the value of S January and T January, S January and T January will give me F February. So, now let us start our calculation for S January and T January. Now, formula is again go back to this slide S t equals to alpha d t plus 1 minus alpha F t. So, S January equals to alpha d t plus 1 minus alpha F t. So, this becomes alpha is uh, what we have taken as alpha's value 0.2. So, this uh, we can write as 0.2 into dt, dt is uh, the current demand that is of January 19 plus 1 minus alpha 0.8 and ft that is the forecast for January that is 20. So, this becomes uh, 19 into 2. 3.8 plus 16 that becomes 19.8. This is the value of S January that is 19.8. Now, I want to calculate the T January. Now, T January is ST minus ST minus 1 plus 1 minus beta T January minus 1 means T naught. Now, beta's value we have taken here as 0.1. So, 0.1 ST we have just calculated is 19.8 S naught was 20 plus 0.9 T 
naught was given as 0. So, here this is uh, 0 0.1 into minus 0 0.2 plus 0. So, it becomes minus 0 0.02 that is the value of trend for the January. So, you can now put these values that S1 is coming 19.8 and T1 is coming minus 0 0.02. So, your F2 will become 19.8 minus 0 0.02. So, F2 will become 19.78. Now, this value will be used for calculation of S2 and T2 and it is possible now that we can do this calculation in this table itself so that we need not to go uh, again to next slides and come back. So, now S2 will be you see this formula alpha dt plus 1 minus alpha ft. So, alpha is 0 0.2 into dt that is 25 plus 0 0.8 into f2 that is 19.78. T2 will be beta 0 0.1. So, this value of S2 minus S1 that is 19.8 plus 0.9 into T1 that is minus 0 0.02. So, you get the value of S2 and T2 now by doing this calculation you can get the values of S2 and T2 and this S2 and T2 will give you the value of F3 that is S2 plus T2. So, now as we just discussed in the previous case, in this case also you can develop a iterative method of calculation and that iterative method of calculation will help you in doing this calculation in a very simple straightforward manner. It is a more cumbersome method because you are simultaneously need to smoothen two values base and trend, but if you just develop a standard process in Excel, it is very simple just by updating the values you keep on getting the new values. And finally, you get the value of F July that is sum of S June and T June. Now, the important point which we need to see that we have done this calculation for the same set of actual demand 1925, 1921, 2025. In this case, we consider that trend is present in the data and therefore, we took uh, these two smoothing values. In the previous case, we did not consider the trend. We only took as our base values and there was no presence of trend. With both these methods, we got the values of forecasting. Now, it is important to see which method is more useful in the given situation. So, as a forecasting manager, as operation manager, it is nobody going to tell you that which method you apply. It is your wisdom that which method is more suitable for my given data. And for that purpose, we are going to discuss in one of our coming sessions forecasting errors. Use of those concepts of forecasting errors will help us in determining the suitability of a particular method. If our forecasting error measures are giving lower values, that method is a suitable method. If those values are higher, then we need to see some other method. Because if forecasting is done with lot of mistakes, if it is not in, uh, accurate, then uh, whole production planning will suffer. You will not be able to take the advantage of the production planning. So, therefore, it is important that uh, we understand this particular thing properly and uh, uh, it is not only this uh, suitability of method. In this particular case, we took the value of alpha equals to 0 0.2 and beta equals to 0 0.1. Now, since I have shown you manual calculation, you may be a bit afraid, but uh, when we use calculators, when we use uh, our uh, softwares for this purpose, 
you can play with the values of smoothing constants also. You can take some other combination, you take alpha equals to 0.15, beta equals to 0.05. You can take alpha equals to 0.2, beta equals to 0.15. You can take alpha equals to 0.25, beta equals to 0.15. So, you can take any combination of alpha and beta's value and just by if you have everything done in your excel spreadsheet it becomes very very convenient to do this kind of play with your data now whichever set of alpha beta values give you minimum forecasting errors that is a suitable values of alpha beta for your case because it is very very difficult from naked eyes to tell that uh, this particular value of alpha and beta is suitable for this particular data only by iterations, only by putting different values of alpha and beta and checking those alpha beta values for forecasting errors will tell you that this set is a suitable value. So, we need to see and we will see that uh, when we will discuss the forecasting error in our coming session. So, with this we discussed in this particular session that uh, how to apply basic exponential smoothing model. And then we also discuss the same set of data for exponential smoothing with linear trend. In our next session, we will discuss one more example where we see the seasonality component also included in our demand data. So, for this, thank you very much.